There must be something wrong here. I mean, they can't have two parents. Howdy, I'm Caleb Lee, and this is Family History Fanatics, and today I decided to do my own research over my shoulder because I can't let mom have all the fun. And so I, today I'm going to tell you about the tale of a man who had two sets of parents. Well, probably not, but on the family tree he does. Let's take a look. Alrighty, so now we are here on the, the family tree, and let me show you the guy. This is him, David J. Searcy, and this is his his wife, Viola, and if we go to his person page, we will find, as we scroll down, that his parents, William Searcy and Mary E. Peake, just as we saw on that, fa that tree over there, but wait, he's got another set of parents, another William Searcy, and a Sarah Ann Peake. Now, the interesting thing, these aren't just, you know, people that they got slapped together and it's mixed up. These are actually sisters. You see, Sarah Ann Peak and William B. Searcy. There's a lot of things that could happen here to make this thing happen, but we're trying to figure out who are David J. Searcy's actual parents. And then we want to figure out the story behind how this got mixed up, whether it was the researcher's mistake or this was an actual thing that happened back in those days and uh, maybe like an adoption or something. But Let's get our clue web ready. So here we are in Google, in Google Drive. If you haven't heard of it, it's one of the best pr programs out there. I highly encourage you to, to check it out. But we're not going to be using Drive, Google Drive primarily today. We're going to be using another thing. Because, you know, I like making things easier for ourselves. So I found a program that does all the clue webbing for us without all of the Photoshopping. So it is called MindMup 2.0 for Google Drive. So let's make a new file. So here we are in MindMup. It's not that cool. It's just a square that we can move around like this. You see, it's kind of fun. But what we're going to do, we're going to put it in the center of the screen and we are going to put in our research question right here. We're going to make this as detailed as possible. We want to be very specific as to what we want to know. So here is our, our research question. We are trying to figure out who are the parents of David J. Sorcy, who was born in the 14th of February, 1846, in Lawrenceburg, Anderson, Kentucky? Now we're going to figure out how we're going to figure out what are the parents of David J. Sorcy. There are two things we can do. Analyze what we already have, or we can find new records. Now we're going to start with analyzing what we already have, because if somebody's already found the answer and attached it to his profile on FamilySearch, there's no need to act find more records. Finding more records is good, but in the interest of getting the case done as quickly and efficiently as possible, we always start with what we have. So what are we trying to analyze here exactly? What are we? What can we analyze to figure out whose parents are David Searcy's? Well, there are a couple things we can do. One thing we can do is figure out which records point to which parents, i.e. are these people mentioned as the parents of David J. Searcy, or are these people mentioned as parents of David J. Searcy. If there are more records telling us that William and Mary are David's parents rather than Sarah and William, then it's more likely that the Mary and William are in fact his parents. It's not just the records we have to look at, we have to look at the reliability of records. For instance, the birth record would be much better than for say a census record in determining who are his parents. Because, you know, people can easily fudge census records, whereas birth records are much harder to fudge, though it's possible, but it's much harder to fudge because the baby just came out of that woman and not the other one. Another thing we can do that you might not know you can do and you should do is look at the change log. It's not actual genealogical information of the relationships, but it does tell us when he was connected to these people. Is it a recent development that David has had two parents, or has this been going around for a long time and nobody's been able to solve it? If it's with the last one, we might have a brick wall here, and those are really annoying. And the last thing I can think of is records that mention the spouse also naming the parents. Because if we can connect David to his wife, and we can connect the wife to his parents, then we can connect David to his parents. A bit of triangulation, if you want to know more about how it's using DNA, you can talk to my dad. However, we want to get started on this research, so let's dive into David J. Searcy's profile page. 
So we are back at Family Search, and we're going to start diving into this mystery, starting with his vital information. This is useful information as to figuring out, hey, were his parents in the area when he was born? But we're, what we're really trying to get at is the sources. So let's go down past the people, and let's check out this stuff. So starting with David J. C. C. in the entry for Viola Cersei, Ohio Deaths. So, who's Viola? Well, Viola is actually his wife, whose maiden name was Buntane, which is a good thing. Someone's found her maiden name, which means she's going to be connected to her parents, most likely. But since this, this is Viola's death record, it's probably not going to mention hit her husband's parents. And unfortunately, it doesn't. So, we're going to have to move to the next one. So, next up, J David J. Cersei in the household of William B. Cersei, United States Census, 1880. Good to know. And we find, yes, William B. Cersei. We know this William B. Cersei is in the Sarah Ann Cersei fa family because Mary Ann Cersei's William did not have an initial. But then we have a problem. This is Sally A. Cersei, listed as the wife. And yep, that's, that's Sally A. right there with William B. Cersei. And there's David J. Cersei. So, it wasn't a misread. Now, this might be weird. I mean, does he have a third set of parents running around? Oh, please don't let there be a third set of parents. Good thing, because there isn't. Um, I've actually gone and looked, and Sally is one of the nicknames of Sarah. Good to know. So, to make this video quicker, I'm just going to go through all of these and figure out which ones point to which set of parents, and I'll see you soon. And we're back. So, I've made some changes here. I've added a bunch of stuff. And, unfortunately for us, there were only two records that pointed to his parents. And what makes matters even worse, both of them were for different parents. <sighs> so let's start with the first one. We remembered the 1880 census came with Sarah, aka Sally, and William B. Meanwhile, the other one y'all didn't see is David's death record, where it names Mary, William, and Viola. This is really good for us, because if Viola is connected to David, and Viola is connected to the parents, then the parents must be connected to David. This is a good opportunity. However, it's only one record. Uh, that's not enough to build a case, especially if there's one other record. And the one that's closer to his birth, so it'd be more accurate as to who the parents are, is the one that is for the opposite group. So, nothing too concise. Also, one thing to note here is check the notes, guys. Check the notes. Because sometimes you'll find little gems like this. The names and dates for the birth of David and his family were provided in 1953 by his fourth child, Ola Cersei, marks by correspondence. Now that Ola Cersei is this one, born in 1906. And while we don't know when William or Mary died, they, they might have been alive in 1906, they might have not. We know that William died in 1906, William B, I should say, but Sarah Ann Peak was dead in 1926, meaning Ola would have been 20. Unless there was a family feud, Ola probably knew the name of her grandmother. So, I'm going to be contacting this uh, this Jeffrey Cullison guy, and I'm going to figure out, did Ola mention her grandmother? And if not, well, Ola's kind of dead, so that thread of inquiry might not be as useful. But it, it could be, be really useful. It could end this case right now. But since he hasn't gotten back to me, we need to go deeper. We need to figure out what is in the change log. When was David J. Cersei connected to Mary and Willem? And when was he connected to Sarah? So here we are. What we're going to do is we're going to go to latest changes. And we're going to click show all. It's going to load this fancy page. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see what happened in the very beginning. When David J. Cersei's profile on Family Search was created by one... Caleb Joshua Lee. Hmm. That darn young whippersnapper. Let's figure out what I actually put on here in connection to him. I connected him to Mary E. Peak and William Cersei. And this is the Mary and William couple we talked about, and this is the actual death record that Mary and William are connected to. So all the knowledge we had about this guy originally was just the stuff that connected him to William and Mary. But let's go and figure out where he got connected to Sarah and William B. 27th of January, 2018. A historic date. The date that David J. Cersei was mixed up with William B. Cersei and Sarah Ann Peake. 
and after these two were added, it's basically over. I've done some preliminary research for this thing and uh, nothing else. So let's get back to the clue web. So as you can see, I've added connected to David from the beginning onto Mary and William, and it's looking like Mary and William are his parents and Sarah and William B are in fact not his parents since they were just added on later. So are we done yet? Can we safely detach these two? Well, no. We've got to figure out if there's anything else. We've got to be absolutely certain. We just can't have two pieces of evidence. What we need to do is we need to start researching and seeing what other sources we can find for each of these people. And the important thing we're going to try to find is David's birth record. Like I said, very hard to fudge a birth record. And if we can find the birth record, we have a very, very reliable source as to who his parents are. And then we'll be able to finally close this case of who are David's parents.